Okay. Okay, I was wondering what was going on, but I see now, I see. Hey, everybody, hey. If you all can see and hear me well, just let me know. Put a one in the chat. Put a one in the chat if you can see and hear me well. All right. Hey, precious baby. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Peggy bro. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hey, Myra. Backyard flow. Sweet thumbs. Okay. I see y'all. I see y'all. Let me get up to the uh, top of the chat and try to... It was... Gail Hooper. Hey, Gail. Hey, my Renaissance grandma. Maria Graham. Hey, baby. Did you see I dropped your uh, cantaloupe seeds, Maria? Yeah, baby. I dropped those seeds today. <laughs> hey, Juicy with Jay. Backyard Flow. Christine. Hey. Peace and blessings to Slenda and everyone in the chat. Hey. Hey, Miss Collins. How are you? Hey, Peggy, bro. Yeah. Myra. Hey, Myra. Sweet Thumbs. Hey, Linda from Sweet Tomato Vine Homestead. She said, good evening, Miss Linda, and everyone in the chat. Hey, Roro. Hey, Laura. My Renaissance grandma, I think I spoke, but hey, baby. How you doing? Um, Miss Jackson. Hey, how you doing? Morris Family Studio. Hey, baby. How are you? How y'all doing? Oh, I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. Yeah. I got my dinner waiting. <laughs> that girl always hungry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey. All right. All right. It's crazy, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, by you, Sugar. She said, hello, Miss Lynn, everyone. Happy Easter. Same to you, my love. Same to you. I hope you've been having a good day today. I hope all is well with you all. So today we're going to do a little something different, but I'm going to start off with, of course, we're going to start off with Meatless Monday and ask the question, hey, Miss Gloria, and ask the question, who will be participating? Let me know. If you are going to participate in Meatless Monday on tomorrow, April Fool's Day, <laughs> let me know. Say yes. Say yes. Or, you know, don't say nothing at all. Hey, Netta. How you doing, baby? LOL. I know that dinner is ready. You know it, baby. You know it's ready. Ah. <laughs> yes. Salutations to you, baby. Yes, Maria Graham says she's in. Myra, she's in. All right. All right. And I'm definitely in. All right, Morris family, she's in. I'm in for Meatless Monday and the water. Yes, yes. I'm down with the water too, baby. I'm down with the water. Yeah, I'm getting so that I'm drinking more water than I have ever drank before. And my son is very happy about it because yesterday we hung out together, my son and I. So I asked him to stop and get me a Sprite. And he said, okay, I'll get you a Sprite. But he keeps like a case of water in his, in his Jeep, right? He said, I'm going to give you, I'm going to buy you this, <laughs> this Sprite, but you got to drink this bottle of water. I'm like, cool, baby. Cool. Cool. <laughs> so I did it. Hey, Jeannie. Good evening, Miss Linda. Planting seeds everywhere. Okay, from Missouri. Okay, baby. Good, good. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Journey Under the Sun say, you might catch me with a chicken wing in my hand tomorrow. Uh, I'll let you know how Meatless Monday goes on Tuesday. Right. So listen, this is, this is the way I don't get caught is I pre-plan. I pre-plan my food. I get my food prepared on Sunday night for Monday. And that's how I don't fail. Now, 
Every time I have failed is because I didn't pre-plan. And when I go in that kitchen and I'm hungry, whatever is in there is going. <laughs> so pre-planning is the key. Hey, Bougie baby, how you doing, honey? How you doing? Hey, Odom, how y'all doing? Let me see that I miss anybody. Y'all, it's getting warm in here. Hey, Cassandra, I need to turn this fan on because I'm getting a little warm now. I see. Okay. Woo. All right. Cassandra, Journey Under the Sunset, LOL. Yes, I haven't um, meal planned this week, okay? And I see why I said that. Yes, you've got to meal plan in order so you will not fail. Precious says, uh, my trainer, oh, has me on meats and veggies only, but I already prepped uh, my meat this Monday meal. Great, baby. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. So check this out. But wait, let, let me do this. I want to thank you all for being here, everyone. I want to thank everybody here in the chat. If you are in the bushes, thank you too. If you are going to watch the replay, if you're here in the replay, I want to thank you for watching. I hope I say something that will help you in your garden or just in life in general. Okay. Myra say, whatever it takes. For uh, for what? Wait, whatever it takes for my will. Okay, Myra, you got to do that again for me. Hey, JK. Hey, JK. All right. So today I want to do something a little different. So first of all, I, I want to say a word and I want your feedback on it. Okay. And at the end of the video, I want to tell you all the story. But at the end of this live, and I'm putting it at the end of this live because maybe it's not for everybody, okay? And if it's not for everybody, then I don't want to waste your time. So I'm going to put it at the end, okay? But first, we're this is gardening. This is all about gardening. So this is for new gardeners. This is for us to help new gardeners. If you are a gardener that have been gardening one, two, three, four, five years, whatever, you can help new gardeners coming in who has only been growing one year, two years, right? So in this way, we are helping each other, okay? So the first word I'm going to say, and, and this word I want to say is, and I want you to tell me what you think is the most important thing you need to know about this vegetable of how to grow it, all right? I'm going to say this, this vegetable, and you all just say to me just one, 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 one statement about why, what do you think is the most important thing you need to know when you grow this vegetable? Okay, y'all with me with that? Miss Linda, you are wearing, oh, thank you, babe. Thank you so much, honey. I appreciate you. I still consider myself a new gardener. And I understand, Bougie. It, listen, honey, I think, and, and this is what I've always said. At the beginning of the season, baby, we all start right here. All of us. All of us. Okay? Peggy Burrow say, uh, you recommend to remove the coating from around the moringa seed they sprouted in three days beautiful my love beautiful that's what i do all the time to to my moringas yeah great awesome okay so this is the vegetable peppers tell me what is your number one thing you think is most important that someone need to know how to grow a pepper, any kind of pepper, sweet pepper, hot pepper, just peppers. You know, I can hear people say, well, what variety? Just a pepper, baby, just a pepper. What do you think is the most important thing a gardener should know about growing peppers? Netta says patience. 
Yeah, baby. And I think that's with all of our vegetables, right? We all need a dose of patience. Uh, Homestead Rachel says, um, sunlight. So Homestead Rachel, is that your name, Tank? Let me know. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> um, Soil and NPK, Bougie said, okay. Take time to grow peppers, okay. Hey, Deborah, sunlight, but not too much or they will burn. Okay. All right. So for new gardeners that's coming in, read read these answers. They are all going to help you when it comes to you growing your peppers. Okay. Hey, Sammy Joe. Hey, Miss Gloria. They like weather. Hot. All right. All right. Cool. All right. I know a bit, but never enough, always learning. Okay, so Mike, what would be your number one thing about growing peppers? Now, I'm not talking about inside. I'm talking about outside. Outside. What is your number one thing you would tell people they should know about growing peppers outside? Yeah, and, and listen. I'm not asking you to be a seasoned gardener to answer because first year gardeners, they have experiences too, you know? Yeah. It was years ago when I was a child, I was a tomboy. I, yeah, I'm just saying, isn't that the name that your family gave you, Tank? I thought I heard you say that in one of your videos. I was watching it. Yeah. They take time, a long time to germinate. That's true, Sylvia. And that's the thing is that when a lot of people drop their pepper seeds, be prepared to have with Bougie, the first thing Bougie said, to be to have those patients because it takes a while for them to germinate. Yes, yes, definitely patience. It's slow germination and waiting on them to get ripe. Okay, okay, yeah. I start my peppers on a heating mat. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. So for me, the number one thing that I would say to people uh, when they're dropping pepper seeds is location. Location is to, uh, and just like, um, Precious, my baby said, is location, heat. Uh, I would definitely set my peppers in the middle of my garden. Yeah. Uh, Christine said, thank you because I started a lot of peppers. I'm very new to gardening and I need all the help I can get. So all of these answers you see, Christine, take them in, baby. Take it in. Take it in. <clears throat> You put them on the heat mat <clears throat> so they can germinate faster, right? Okay, okay. And you know, I mean, just, I mean, listen, we just talking, we just talking. So just, you let me know, Linda, since you put your peppers on a heating pad so it could germinate faster, right? Why do you want your peppers to germinate fast? I mean, it's just a question. Um, Morris family said, I had zero success with peppers. So thank you. <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Easter, LGGG, baby. Same to you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, Beautiful Jungle said, I would like to know if it's true that I need to rotate the beds that I grow my peppers in each year. Well, well, let me just say this. I don't know nothing about that. And I have never did that. So <laughs> maybe someone here can answer that for you, but I'm going to just tell you, beautiful Jungo, I have never rotated my beds for any vegetable. None. No. No. Okay, baby. Um, uh, Nikki, hey, Nikki, baby, how you doing? 
Okay, Sammy Joe, oh, Gloria. Hey, Gloria. Uh, Larita, hey, baby, how are you? Oh, okay, everybody's speaking. The Winning Walk with Christine. Hey, with Christine, Christine, hey, baby. Mike, also have something to do with the peppers once you get... And that's the thing sometimes, and that's for people seriously that lives in the north. You have to be, you know, tri you know, really keeping on game with. And it could be frustrating because you know, who can predict the weather, right? Is if you drop your seeds too soon, right? Yeah, and I understand. Yeah. Hey, Educated Natural, how you doing, baby? Uh, hey, Miss Linda, how are you doing tonight? I'm great, baby. How are you? How are you? Uh, the Winnie Walk. Hey. Okay. So that's it with you all, Peppers. That's, that's all you all recommend. So I recommend, of course, location. And also, you know, we spoke of being patient. And, you know, that's what our garden care, rather you direct sow or rather you are um, planting in cups, um, be patient, be patient because, you know, they're going to show up, baby. They're going to show up. Hey, J3GS Farms. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for the roses. I appreciate it. Oh, Elodie in here. Hey, sister. Hey, let me find you. Let me find you. Oh, there you are. Hey, my sister. How you doing, baby girl? Good to see you, my love. Good to see you. All right. So, let's see. Let me get to the bottom. Hey, April, baby. How are you? How you doing? Good to see you, honey. Um. Okay. So, I would recommend, of course, location and definitely now this is just me now okay this is just me i fertilize not only my peppers but i fertilize my garden in the spring and in the fall every 10 days now i'm gonna tell you why i use a liquid fertilizer now, in the beginning of the garden season, like in the beginning of spring, and I am um, uh, amending my soil. I will use bone meal and blood meal in my soil. I do. But that is the only time I will use granulated, um, uh, granulated fertilizer, exception, my onions. And I will use bone meal or bean meal um, on my onions um, like about a month after I have dropped them, okay? But other than that, I use liquid fertilizer. And the reason I use liquid fertilizer, of course, you all know I use 511 and super juice. And the reason is granulated, granulated, fertilizer releases the nutrients over time okay over time your plants will not uptake those nutrients right now when you put it on there no it's a slow release fertilizer granulated fertilizers are slow release right but when you use liquid fertilizer, baby, they uptake that stuff right now. As soon as you give it to them, yeah, they sucking it up, okay? So this is why I don't use granulated fertilizers during the season, okay? I do what you said about feeding every 10 days, uh-huh. And have beautiful results. Wonderful, Mike. Wonderful. And so, and just remember, slow release is granulated. So if you give your plants some granulated, like whatever, um, 
bone meal, blood meal, whatever. They got these other packs of stuff, you know. If it is dry, it's a slow release. Your plants will not uptake it today. Probably won't uptake it tomorrow, okay? But if you put something liquid in there, they sucking it up as soon as you put it in there, okay? So I give my plants, I fertilize them every 10 days, especially when they are fruiting. When they're putting on their flowers, yes, I want to give them that nutrient. I want to help them. I want to help them. Helping, right? That's what I do. LGG says, I use peppers and throw them in, um, in a flower pot and forget them. When they pop up, I just laugh. Okay, the less I care, the more they jump. Yeah, sometimes you know how we do. You know. Let me see if I missed anybody with y'all. Say, hey, James and Joan. Hey, baby, how you doing? Good to see you. So that would be my number one thing when it comes to growing peppers uh, and any vegetable really in my garden. I fertilize every 10 days and I give liquid fertilizers. I do granulate it only at the beginning of the season when I am amending the soil. That's the only time I'll use it. Hey, Regina. Hey, baby. How are you? Sammy Joe, I yell at you. Hey, baby. Hey. All right. So the question was, what do you think is the most important thing someone needs to know when they are growing peppers? Okay, that's the question. All right, Mike. Good, good, man. What is super juice? <laughs> all right, all right. I'm explaining to you, baby. The more peppers you harvest, the more you get. Don't let the plant think its job is done. Come on, man. And that is the same way with beans, too. The more you pick it, the more they grow. Brassicas are the same way, too. The more you harvest, the more they grow. Yeah, all that stuff. Good evening, Greg Jones. All right, so super juice. Super juice is many people make super juice differently. They call it, some of it call them call it compost tea. And as I said, you call your juice whatever you want to call it. Okay, that's yours. That's your garden. But this is what I do. I take leaves that maybe uh, it was infested with some bugs, maybe it was eaten by bugs, um, grass that been cut. I put it all in a bucket. I put water in it. I let it set for a couple of days. You know, let it marinate in that thing, right? And then I feed it to my garden. And baby, they respond. Now, Hands in the dirt also takes like a bag or you could take a bag or a stocking and fill it up with compost and put that compost in that, in that water. Very good stuff. I also put 511 in mine. Yeah, baby. And do they respond? I dare you to try it. I dare you. I dare you to try it. Your plants is going to be looking amazing. And I mean amazing. Okay? This is what I call allowing the garden to feed the garden because you're just recycling back the garden, but now you're changing that solid into a water, a liquid. Right? And your garden is going to love it. And it's filled with Nothing that's going to hurt you. No chemicals in there. Not unless you put it in there. Okay? Yeah. All right. Let me see. Celerita so says, the grocery store gave me some baskets, crates. Okay. They had a lot in the back of the store. I only got four to leave for other people. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if they need some. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit told me to call this real very good, baby. Very good. Very good. 
I'm so glad you got them. All right. Red Lady said, good evening, Miss Linda. I'm loving the hat. Thank you, love. Thank you. And hello, hello to everyone in the chat. Happy Easter to all. You too, sweetheart. All right. That's all. I, I didn't think I... Hey, Kim. Hey, Kim. How are you, baby? Okay, so the first one was peppers. The second vegetable. This is to help all of us, right? We are helping each other. What is the most important thing you need to know when you are planting tomatoes? What is the most important thing you need to know when you are planting tomatoes? Now, I just give me one thing. Don't give me a whole paragraph, okay? What is the most important thing you need to know when you are growing tomatoes? Now, this is going to help. Hell, it could help our first, second, third. It could help our fourth, fifth, you know, uh, years of gardeners. You never know. Okay. So, Mike, oh, Sylvia said, plant the plant really deep. Perfect, baby. Mike says, space. And the like of air. Okay, okay. They like air. All right, Mike. Um, grow for hey, grown folks. Hey, baby. <laughs> Heavy feeders. Okay. Uh, Peggy Bro said, uh, don't don't splatter the water on the leaves. Okay. Yeah, sun. Regina say sun. Um, my Renaissance grandma say, don't overwater tomatoes yeah trim them at least once a week to get good air circulation nikki says a layer of mulch around your plants help retain moisture and cools the soil for tomatoes great now listen you first year second year third year gardeners these are these are great great listen Take this. Take this stuff. <laughs> this is great information, okay? Great information. Um, determine? What do you mean, baby? So what you're saying, there's determinate and indeterminate tomatoes. But I'm not talking about the variety. I'm just talking about the tomato itself, okay? Fence. Keep deer away. <laughs> Sammy Joe. <laughs> Sammy Joe said, keep the deers away. Well, listen, I will say to you to go over to growing out the box because he got a great method for keeping deers away. Check him out. Growing out the box. Yeah. Remove suckers regularly. All right, Linda. That is amazing right there. Yeah. Mike says to remove suckers. Yeah. All right. What else we have? So let me just say this. Tomatoes are one of the most finickiest <laughs> vegetables you can ever grow. They are so finicky. You know, they just like a, a little bougie woman, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not talking about you, my baby bougie, but you know these little bougie women they got out here. That's the way a tomato plant is. She wants everything perfect for her. <laughs> yeah. JK say, making sure your soil contains adequate calcium, baby. Now, that is my number one, JK. That's my number one. When you are growing tomatoes, family, do not, do not forget to put calcium in that soil. Chief Finicky. And listen, you're going to be looking at some beautiful tomatoes. And when you raise her up, her butt will be looking real funny. Calcium. Calcium. Now, y'all remember that one? Calcium. Calcium. Being bougie is a good thing. <laughs> well, you and tomatoes, tomatoes are bougie. They are so bougie. They want everything perfect. So, staking these Staking your tomatoes are important, right? Calcium, that's my number one, calcium. 
And of course, as I said, is that I fertilize every 10 days and that girl be sitting there waiting for it. <laughs> she be waiting for it. Okay. So every 10 days I feed them. I feed them y'all. I'm just, I'm just saying water from the bottom. Yes, Sammy Joe. And this is why this is why my brassicas, I will spray those leaves. It really don't matter to me. And, and we know this is that when it rains, the rain come on everywhere, leaves everything. But when we water our tomatoes, we do not want to water the leaves. And the reason, I'm sorry, the reason is, is because of blight. If you ever get early blight or a late blight and you don't know what you're looking at or you don't do anything, you're going to lose that entire plant. And one of the things that can, can happen is when you continuously water your leaves of your tomato plants, she will get diseased and it spreads. It spreads and your entire tomato, every, it will be wiped out. So water your tomatoes from the bottom, the bottom. Okay. Hey, Jody, sincere. Hey, my baby girl. How you doing, honey? Sammy Joe say water from the bottom. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, we got that. Um, Christine says, uh, I'm um, writing everything down so I will know what to do. Beautiful, baby. A beautiful jungle said, oh, she, she's telling it to, uh, okay, baby, I get it. Um, Cassandra says, prune bottom leaves and avoid splashing leaves when watering. Yes. So, all the leaves at the bottom of your plant, you should take them off. Take them off because you don't want it to, you don't want the water to splash back. And especially you don't want any of the soil to splash back up on those leaves. That's a problem. So take those bottom leaves off. Just take them off. It's not going to hurt them. You are growing tomatoes, not leaves. Being, oh, yeah, boozy. I hear you, my baby. Mike say, um, oh, funny OCD chick. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Calcium and bone meal. Okay, okay. So this is what I do is, of course, I give my plants 511 and super juice. But my tomatoes, I make sure in that soil, and that's where a lot of your eggshells come in. Also, calcium. And this is another thing that I've seen people use. I have used this way in the past is you just take Tums, Tums, crush them up and put them in your soil or crush them up, crush them up really good, put them in water and shake them and let them be in there and spray the bottom of your leaves, spray them. Now, that's another way to get calcium, but the best place to put them is in the soil. Put that calcium in the soil. You could also use garden lime also. That's another way. All right? All right. So, we did peppers. We did tomatoes. So, let's do something a little different. Beans. What is the most important thing you need to know about growing beans and I listen I mean beans it doesn't matter if it's pole beans or bush beans beans what do you think is some of the most important things you need to know about growing beans let me get to the bottom hey passionately intrigued how you doing baby so Kim says, plant some marigolds with your tomato. Okay. 
Okay. I have a hard time with long neck squash. Um, I get uh, black on leaves sometimes, worms. Okay. Wait a minute, y'all. All right. <laughs> I hear you, Mike. Tell her, Mike. Tell her, Mike. <laughs> Leave beans alone. Oh, come on, baby. Wait a minute. What you say? <laughs> Fresh, you say, y'all, leave those beans alone. This is the first year my beans actually grew really well. And I haven't done much to them. Beautiful. Beautiful. And that's the thing about beans. And, and, and there's another herb like that, too. Um, rosemary. And, and Precious, I know you know about rosemary. You got these big bushes in front of your house. But... That's another thing. We want to baby a lot of these vegetables. But many times, if we just leave them alone, leave them alone. I like it. I like it, Precious. <laughs> yeah. Jeannie Winfer say, I use tomato baskets, plants, uh, plant them in the soil. Okay, cool. Hey, Miss D. Hollywood, how are you? Peggy say beans will put nitrogen into the soil, and it will, it will. But how do you grow your beans? Let me know. What do you do to your beans? Hey, journey under the sun, pick your beans while tender. Don't let them get too big. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> yeah, plant them in um in the soil ground. Okay. Harvest beans regularly to encourage them to produce more. I love that, Cassandra. It's true. A beautiful jungle say, Tums? Wow. Thank you. Yes, Tums is calcium. So crush it up and put it in your soil before you put your tomato in or after. But you want that calcium in that soil because if you don't have enough calcium in your soil, yeah, your tomatoes is going to have blossom and rot really bad. And that's a bad feeling, y'all. It's a bad feeling. If they are whole beans, make sure uh, that you trellis them. Yes, exactly. Beans don't require fertilizers. True. And it's true. Yes, uh, I have front yard full of rosemary. Just leave her alone. She will grow. Yes, she will. She will. But this is my thing here. And I and, and Linda, I hear you, and it's true that beans does not need a lot of fertilizers because it's like a nitrogen setter. It just, you know, she does all her things by herself. But when I'm feeding my entire garden, I don't treat her like a stepchild. I give her some too, y'all. I do. And she still produced just as great. Just as great. Right. All right. You are giving great, great answers. I love it. I love it. I love you, T and family. Uh, I'm in Danny. Oh, D Daniel's birthday. Okay. And I need to wrap up some homework. So we can um, hang out together and enjoy. Oh, thank you, baby. I love you for being here. Thank you. And happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all. So that's about the beans. Pole beans needs trellis. Bush beans do not. Even though I still put little steaks by bush beans just because, but they really don't need a trellis. Okay. So this is the last one. Y'all ready? What is the most important thing you need to know about growing cucumbers? Cucumbers. And listen, 
It doesn't matter the variety. I'm just talking about cucumbers. What is your number one thing you need to do to grow a great harvest of cucumbers? Sammy, you don't need to plant them all at once. I do one planting one week, then I plant more two weeks later. And that's beautiful, um, Sammy Joe, because that's a lot of things that I do too. Um, and that is succession planting. And that is exactly what I do. And that's beautiful. Yeah. Journey Under the Sun say, make sure your cucumbers get pollinated. All right. Okay. So, Journey Under the Sun, do you hand pollinate a lot of your cucumbers? Let me know. Guava, y'all. This is tea from the garden, mint and stuff. Come on, ice. You got to move. Wait a minute, let's see what Nikki said. Nikki said, plant cucumbers when temperatures reach the mid-70s. All right. Mike said, my cucumbers climb and love water. Yeah. Guava, Mike. Guava. All right, Meta. Guava, y'all. Yeah. Miss D. Hollywood says, cucumbers need to grow up up the ground. I guess they, they need a trellis. Cucumbers need a trellis. Yes. They need bone meal. Okay. Guava bougie baby. Uh, that I need all um, the help I can get. Wait a minute, baby. Sammy Joe, help I can get when it comes to cucumbers. <laughs> they don't like me. Really? All right. Wait a minute. Let me see what um, Precious say. Precious said, make sure to have a trellis and trim weekly. Take off those dead leaves. Yeah. And also, I like to take off the bottom leaves, of those big bottom leaves at the bottom of my, um, my cucumbers, right? Because cucumbers is also a little finicky because she gets um, this fungus on her and Listen, if you ever see like yellow and then you see white uh, fungus looking stuff on your leaves, baby, start taking that stuff off and get those leaves off of your property. Just get them all. Don't put them in your super juice. Don't put them in your compost bin. Get them, put them in a bag and put them in the trash. All right. Jeannie said, when you pick them, don't let none turn colors or they plant or the plant will stop producing and die. Now, wait a minute. What you say? When you pick them, I guess you, you're talking about cucumbers, right? Don't let none turn colors or the plant, I guess, will stop producing and die. Now, see, that's something I, I, I don't know. Tell me that again another way, because I, I don't know. So what, what do you mean don't let them turn colors? Let me let, let me know. All right. Journey Under the Sun say, I only do hand pollinating, okay? Hand pollination in the spring. I usually don't have a second time around because the bees are out. Okay, okay. Allow adequate airflow to prevent powdery mildew. That's the stuff. By pruning a few leaves and give plenty of water. Right. So when you have a lot of leaves on your cucumbers, just start cutting some of them off. Really? And uh, it'll stop that because of powdery mildew with heat. And if you water those leaves, that's where your problem's going to come in. Okay? Yeah. Q 
cucumbers are high maintenance. I don't care what nobody said, and I believe you. They can be. They really can be sometimes. Yeah. Water is critical for cucumbers during um, the filtering stage, simply because cucumbers is almost like 95% water. So they need water. Give them water, baby. And you're right. Don't let them dry out. Powdery mildew is the worst. Yes, and it is. Hey, Stacy, man, how you doing? How you doing, man? Don't allow cucumbers to completely ripen or the plant life short. Really? Now, listen, I, I'm just saying what I have done. I have harvested cucumbers straight off the plant and went inside and in 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 uh, and um cleaned it and chopped it up and ate it. Uh, my lemon cucumbers, I let them turn yellow, and I have eaten some. Just pluck it off and spray a little water on them and eat them. But I didn't know that. So you're telling me something new, okay? Uh, if you let them go from green to yellow, the plant dies. Ah, I, I don't know. Yeah, that is something to know, I tell you. They stay on the vine too long, they will turn yellow, and they stop producing. Cool. That's something new for me. See, we all learn something new. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the last one on my list is, and, and I know some people say they have a hard time growing this vegetable, but you let me know. What is the most important thing you need to know when you are growing celery? Let me know. What is the most important thing you need to know when you are growing celery? Cassandra, do you mean harvest when young and tender? Yeah. <laughs> Get it right, Nikki. Get it right, baby. Yeah. All right. What'd you say, Mike? Mike's the green regular cucumbers, we eat them green, but they will turn yellow. Okay. Okay. I've only grown celery once, so I don't have any hints, okay, for growing celery. All right, be patient. Yes, Sylvia, yes. I never had success growing celery, really. My cel celery attempts failed. Learn me something. <laughs> Learn me something. Learn me something. Yeah, yeah. Miss Hollywood says, I have never grown celery. Really? By your sugar say, I think it's important to know celery is cut and come again. Yeah, but we're talking about seeds. And I get it. And it's true. So many of our vegetables are cut and come again, right? We could do it with onions and garlic and celery and just whole but we talking about seeds by you. All right, seeds me. Water, water, water. I learned that the hard way. Okay, beautiful jungle. Celery love water. Yes. Celery needs lots of water. Lots of water. So, okay, sweet thumbs, do you hear this? Water, right? It needs, hey, Andale, how you doing, baby? It needs water, water, okay? Lots of water. I don't know, for me, celery is, I don't know. I just drop it. Did she show up? But I do. I water. So tell me this. How often do you all water your garden? Just let me get that. Five eleven fertilizers, yes. How often do you water your garden? Let me know. Let's 
since they like water plant with cucumber yeah how often do you water your garden okay this time of year every two days because it is raining so much in the summer every evening. Okay, I water at least five days a week. Okay. Red lady, every seven to ten days. Okay, usually nightly in in hot. I guess in the summer, I don't know. <laughs> when it's hot, once or twice a day. Okay. So just normally, normally a normal day in the spring. How, how often do you water? Two to three times a week. Okay, I water my garden when I stick my finger in it okay, and it comes up dry. Okay, so you let your soil dry out and then you water. Okay, daily when it's hot. Okay, Jeannie, every morning, Sammy Joe. Yes, two to three um, per week, more if needed. Okay, yep. Uh, here, y'all, uh, on every celery <laughs> and the water. Okay, once a day. All right, two to three times a week. Every week. Okay, water two to three times a week. Okay, wow. A beautiful jungle say, it always depends on the temperatures outside and what season that we're in. But it's usually twice a week. Really? Okay. I check it um, this time of year once or twice a week. Really? So. Now, of course, I don't water my garden if it's raining. I mean, come on. I let God do it. But no matter if it's winter, spring, summer, or fall, I water my garden every day. How often do I water my garden? Every day. Every day I water my garden. Now, I understand, um, like um, my son's grandma says, she put her finger in her soil, and if her soil is dry, then she water. But. I wouldn't do that to tomatoes. I wouldn't do that to cucumbers because that means that, you know, it's drying out. And what you are doing, you, though, the plants is going to be stressed. They're going to get some stress going on. So I wouldn't do that. Try, I wouldn't do that. No. Um, yeah. Once... I, I water once a day. Let me just say that. Okay. I water once a day. It is still cool here and rains often. It rains here too. And when it rains, no, I don't water. And even the day after it rained, if we had a good rain, I don't water. But normally I water my garden every single day, every day. That's just what I do. And it's something I have always done. It's just what I do. I just like going out nightly, Mike. Wait a minute, Mike. I just like going out nightly to be in my garden so I water, inspect everything. Now, I don't go in my garden at night, baby. No. Mm -mm. I don't go in my garden at night. <laughs> nope. She ain't for me at night. And uh, oh, she's speaking. Um, hands and dirt say I water every day, sometimes twice when it's really hot. I give a uh, a little drink. Yes, yes, you, you're. We get so much rain. Uh, I don't have to water daily unless it. I not understand, baby. I do. I do, because when it rains here, I don't. I don't water, of course. And even the day after it rains, if listen. I look at my plants the, the day after it rains. I look at my plants and my plants will tell me when you look at them and they got their head down, 
And their leaves look dull. They've got that olive color green, they dull. They need water. But if they're not like that, then they fine. But yeah, I water every day. I water every day. My tomatoes are self-watering. Very good. Very good. Um, before sundown. All right, Mike. My garden is a um is in a slope, uh, so it drains really fast. Ah, I get it. I get it. Drip system, Gloria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to water my garden early in the morning. Yeah, yeah. All right, y'all. That was really good, and I hope that I hope that some of us picked up something, you know, that can help us in our garden. I truly do. I truly do. I try to water my garden early. Yes, yes. Um, but new gardeners, first year gardeners, second year gardeners, whatever. I hope we all picked up something from this little, um, this little thing here, just to um, learn how to grow some things a little better this season, right? So, do do any one of you all have any questions about anything you are growing or that you want to grow? Um, give me your questions, and then I'm going to get to this story, okay? All right. Yes, Andel. Always learning. Yes, baby. Uh, great. Yes, baby. I think, you know, all of us, all of us did, you know, some great things for each other, right? Yeah. So I'm just waiting to see. No one have any questions? Okay. I turned that off. All right. Okay, family. So, okay. Uh, Red Lady said, I missed out what was said about the peppers. I came in late. Okay, well, when it goes off, you could go back and uh, look at the replay. Okay, baby, because it was it was a lot, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> it turns up. Uh, uh, is Tums fast acting calcium? So use bean um, bean meal um, and Tums together. No, so bean meal is is phosphorus bone meal, right? Bean meal is 250 milligrams of phosphorus. That's what bone uh, bean meal is. Now, now remember your tums. Tums are fast acting and they dissolve fast. It dissolves fast because really it's hard, but once you crush it, it's a powder, right? And it crushes well. So that Tums is calcium. Get you a bottle of Tums. Go over to the Dollar Tree. Get you a bottle of Tums and look, read it. What, what is Tums? Calcium, period. That's what it is. Crush it up and then put it in the soil. That's one way. Or you could just go buy some garden lime calcium. Or you could save your eggshells calcium. Okay? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I surely will. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Do you do companion planting with tomatoes? I companion plant with everything. Now, you know, some people put this in this and don't do this in this. I do. This is what I do. I plant onions, garlics, leeks, and basil all around my garden. Onions, garlic, leeks, basil, all around my garden, right? That is what I use for uh, pest pressure. And so go back in my videos and you will see my garden, all right? And it works for me. It works and it's been working for me for years, right? And from with my tomatoes, I plant. That's what I plant in there. Onions, garlic, leeks, and sometimes basil. But mostly garlics and leeks in there. That's what I do. 
Um, wait a minute. Uh, planting plant game, planet game. When you talk about squash and zucchini next, um, what do you want to know about squash and zucchini? Because really, I grow maybe a patty pan squash. I'm going to grow a candy roaster squash. But I'm going to drop those probably in June or July because I'm not playing around with the squash by boar. I'm not playing with her. So mm -mm, I'm a, I want her to go ahead on and do her thing somewhere else. And I'm going to plant her late. I'm going to plant my squash late. So I don't be... Mm -mm. That girl too busy for me. Too busy. Yeah. Hey, Steffi. How you doing, baby? Good to see you. Do you... um? What is that? Squash leaves in your soup. I do not. They too finicky for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Grown folks. Hello. Hello. Okay. So, is that it, y'all? Oh, Nikki, what you say? I'm planting my squash late this year, too. Yes. Because I'm not playing with that little girl. I'm not playing with her. She messed up my um, my um, candy roaster squat, even though I did get one because I planted it late. But, yeah, I'm going to plant mine late. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can, um, the two of them together. Okay. Mike say, it is funny how companion plants taste good together in cooking basil, onion, and tomatoes. And, but, you know, I have always just planted those things together for pest pressure. I, I, you know, and the great thing about them is I plant them for, you know, for pest pressure, but then at the end, I harvest them and eat them too. So they all, it, baby, it's a win, win, win. Yeah, it's a win, win. I have ladybugs in my garden, uh, the aphid eggs is keeping her happy. There you go. Yep. I'm not planting my squash to the end of June. There you go. Yeah. It's too much to fight for her with her. Uh, um, question. My celery seedlings aren't doing well. Should I direct so? I do. I direct so my my celery and they they do great. They do great. And you see, there's so many things I can say, but then it's like, I don't know what kind of condition your your plants is in. Do you have her inside? I don't know. Or what kind of soil you have it in? I don't know. You know. My citrus tree flowered, and then after the windy day, no more blooms. Is that normal? <laughs> oh, Steffi. So I want you to go look. If it's an orange tree, a lemon tree, go look and see. Do you have tiny, tiny little oranges or lemon? If you don't, then that means is that all your blooms have flown away plus the fruit too. Sometimes it could be like, you know, you're not going to have any fruit this season. But sometimes on a lemon tree, she'll start growing more, more, more flowers. So. I hope she does. Only thing I don't direct so is tomatoes and peppers. The rest I direct so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, baby. All right. All right, family. So I want to tell you all this story, right? I want to tell you all this story. It's just something that I have been thinking of for a while, and I wanted to share it with you all. Now, mainly it goes out to the ladies, but also the men play a huge role in this story also. Hey, hey, man, how you doing? My question is, can we get a song? <laughs> can we get a song? And hello, Miss Linda. Uh, after I tell this story, okay? Let me tell this story first. Ah. Um, it is definitely for the ladies because in our world, in our world today, 
And many times, you know, we women had to grow up like this to be strong because some men have not stepped up to the plate, right? So some men, you know, they just, they, they striked out. They just didn't hit the ball. So women had to carry the entire load. But women, when you really meet a man, a man, a man family, this is when things can happen for you, okay? So listen at this. This is a story from the Bible. I'm going to tell you where to find it in a minute, okay? But there was this woman. She went up to a prophet by the name of Elijah. And when she went up to him and she told him that her husband had died and he left her with a lot of credit, a lot of bills, and that the creditors were going to take their two sons and really make them slaves until the debt was paid. Have any one of you all heard this story before I tell you where you can find it? All right. I'll wait for y'all to answer. All right. But anyway, but Elijah asked her, he said, what do you have? And she said, I have nothing, but I have a jar of oil. That's all she had was a jar of oil. All right, all right, all right, y'all. And he told her to go and borrow vessels from her neighbors and bring them back and for her and her two sons to go in their house and close the door behind them and fill up those jars. Fill them up. She started filling these jars up. And she kept filling them up. And she asked her son, give me another jar. But he said, well, we have any more. We don't have any more. Family, that story comes from 2 Kings. Um... Wait a minute now. Second Kings, um, I think five and seven. I think that's what it is. This is what I want to say. And the title of this live, it says unnecessary questions. It is because sometimes if you notice in that story, that woman never said to Elijah, but why am I going down there and get these jars? I don't have enough oil for all these jars. She did not say that. All she did was did as she was instructed to do. Sometimes, family, questions are unnecessary. GT. He said, he says these words all the time. Trust the process that when God has something for you, stop asking questions. Stop asking questions. And thank you, baby. Thank you, LGG. It is 2 Kings 1, uh, 4, chapter 4, 1 through 25. But don't ask questions. When God sends something in front of you, stop asking questions. Why? Why am I doing this? When things don't make sense to you, you know, it, it don't make sense to you. Well, now back in the days, this oil that she was talking about, it was olive oil. Back in Bible days, olive oil was the thing, right? That's why I have an olive tree in my garden today. But this is what I want to say. Sometimes, family, don't ask questions like why? Why? Why you want me to go down there? Why you want me to do this? Why you want me to say that? When God is changing things for you and doing things in your life, trust the process, baby. Just be quiet. Stand still. And let God have his way. Let him. 
Don't ask the question why. Okay, family? <laughs> That's the story. Hey, man. All right, y'all. Thank you so much, LGG, baby. That's right. Trust in the Lord. Amen. We must trust in him and let him. But this is when you meet a man that's a man. And see, sometimes when you meet a man, and I mean a man, you will know it. You will know it. A man doesn't have to tell you a lot of things, really. He can just walk in the room and you will know that's a man. <laughs> I'm just saying, nah. if you never met one, baby, if he walk in the room, you will know that's a man. And he don't have to say a word, family, not a word. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's right, Chris. That's right. Because a man, baby, it is something special about a true man. And I know because I've met one or two. <laughs> Amen. Yes, baby. Yes. Yes. Thank you all so much. Yeah. I met a man. I'm glad I met him. Yes. Hands in the dirt, I know. And I love it. You can tell when men are men, they're giving and they're loving, but they're stern. And I love it. I love it, right? I, I do. I do. With all my heart, I do. I do. I really do. And I thank God for my father because he showed me what a real man looked like, walked like, talked like, act like, smelled like. Ooh! <laughs> and when I was growing up, you see, none of these little knuckleheads, you know, perpetrating a fraud, bro. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, family, I wanted to share that with you all. And if you all have never read the story, it's very short, but before you read it, before you read it, pray and ask God to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of his word before you read it, and then read it. Read it for yourself, okay? Yeah. But all right, family, I love you all. Do you all have any more questions about anything? Wait a minute. Amen. Perpetrating a fraud. You know what I'm talking about, Bougie. You know. You know. You know they out here. You know they out here. Mm -hmm. I hear you, Miss Linda. Keep my mouth shut. Pray for me. I'm working on. Amen, baby. Amen. Guava. Guava, baby. Guava, y'all. Guava. Ooh, ooh, that's good. Althea, hey, baby. How you doing? Uh, can we, oh, let's see. Let's see. What can we do? <clears throat> All right, let's see. I don't know. I don't think Jay came in here, but I wanted to show him this because I was on his live. I don't know if you all seen that I was a guest Friday on um, African Dreaming's live, and he was talking about this. Now, hands in earth, Stacy. I know you know what this is. I know you know what this is. Uh, Bougie, I know you know what this is. I think, Bougie, were you in the military? I know uh, Stacy was in the military, but I know y'all know what this is, Stacy, right? Let me know. Look at Mike. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Exactly. But this is the cool part. This one here, you can see that it's reduced sodium. Now, believe it or not, this is one of the M uh, MREs that we received from Katrina. 
Oh, okay, baby. Okay, I'm sorry, bougie. I, I, I did. I had it wrong. I had it wrong. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, thanks, Miss Linda. God bless. A amen to you, baby. Yeah, but um, this is from Katrina, and I have about four or five of them still from Katrina. Yeah, I'm gonna keep them too. Yeah, I thank God so much for placing you in my life. Oh, baby, thank you. Thank you for being here. Let me see, can I find something? <clears throat> um, where is this book? Let's see, let me take this one. All right, family, let's see. All right. All right. Y'all ready? <clears throat> because he lives. <clears throat> I can face tomorrow. <clears throat> because he lives all of my sins are gone because I know who holds my future and life is worth the living just because my Savior lives. God sent his son and they called him Jesus. He came to live, heal and forgive. He all bled and he died just to buy my pardon. But that old empty grave, that old empty grave was there to prove my Savior lived. Amen, family. <clears throat> <clears throat> Glory to his name. I praise God and I thank God for Jesus. I thank God that he rose today for you and I. That the grave couldn't hold him. No. <laughs> yes, Lord. Thank you, man. Thank you. That old empty grave, <laughs> that old empty grave was there to prove my Savior live. Glory to his name. I love you all, and we will see each other Tuesday. Now, listen. Listen, don't y'all get caught now with that chicken. Don't get caught with that chicken. <laughs> Thank you, Myra. Thank you, baby. Thank you for this. You are so welcome, Maria Graham. You are so welcome. Yes, amen. So grateful. I thank God. I thank God. <sighs> amen. Amen, family. Yes. You all have a beautiful evening and we will see each other. We'll see each other on here on Tuesday. And of course, 
we see each other somewhere on somebody else's live, like we usually do, right? Yeah, family. Save leftovers till Tuesday. <laughs> no, yeah, but I'm going to eat right now, man. It, it ain't Monday. No. <laughs> You're so welcome, Miss D. You're so welcome. Thank you, GT, for being here, man. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all have a good night. I love you all. Later, family. <laughs>